Pretendo. Oh, no, nigga. That's just the tip of this eye, boy. Read, nigga. Read. No! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video. Today, we look at good old pal of the channel, and I use that term uh, very loosely, Harmon Smith, the Nintendo fanboy who's so hardcore that Nintendo could take a steaming sh in a bag, slap something Nintendo related on it, and Harmon here would cheat it as if none other than God himself had come to reap the pretendos, as Harmon calls them. Basically, Harmon is salty that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are getting an ungodly amount of pushback, more so than even Pokemon Sword and Shield, and of course Harmon has to jump in and be Nintendo's white knight and defend them tooth and nail, because he just can't stand Nintendo being criticized for releasing a buggy and unfinished game. Anyway, let's get into it. Last night, I finally had the opportunity to sit down and play Pokemon Scarlet. I heard a lot of good things about it. I was really excited to play it. Um, I had put off playing it for a couple of weeks because I was uncomfortable with Toby Fox's involvement, but as no one's really talking about him at all, and because and it feels like more and more like he's sliding into irrelevancy, more and more people are becoming aware of his plagiarism and all the issues surrounding him. What does Toby Fox composing just a few tracks for this game have to do with anything, Harmon? Is he out to get you, Harmon? Did you do something terrible and unspeakable to Toby that caused him to send someone after you? Was it because you smack-talked Toby in that other video? Whatever the case is, one thing that you'll notice is that for one reason or another, Toby Fox lives rent-free in Harmon's head, composing songs on the Steam Deck all the live long day. Also, what plagiarism and issues surround Toby? Also, you are aware that Nintendo's higher-ups in Japan seem to love him, right? He writes for Famitsu now that Masahiro Sakurai stepped down. So it sounds to me like he's gaining relevancy, not sliding into irrelevancy. So I decided that it was time to go ahead and check out Pokemon Scarlet. So I went ahead, bought this game, put it in, and had an absolute blast with it. I played it for like four hours. I would have played it more if I wasn't so busy. Well, it's great to know that you're having fun with the game, Harmon. I've had an absolute blast with it as well, and I've got videos going live of it on my gameplay channel sometime in January of 2023. Anyways, the main point I have here is... What could you possibly be doing outside of writing some really god-awful books that would make you so busy? Judging from the jacket you're wearing, I'd say you're gonna go tangle with those greasy sharks. Great game. Uh, honestly, probably the best generation since Gen 5, honestly. You know, it's better than Gen 6, better than Gen 8, uh, better than Gen 7, in my opinion. Obviously, it's been a while since I played Gen 7, but I did like that one a lot. I think I do prefer Gen 9. So, what... <laughs> What does this mean for Pokemon fans? What does this mean for Nintendo fans? Well, my issue going into this was that I was assured by gaming YouTubers, by Twitter accounts, by like reli um, reliable sources in the industry that this game was broken, that it was unbalanced, that it was glitchy, that it, you would have game cra crashing bugs, you would have all these problems with, you, you know, like playing this game. Not hasn't really happened. Maybe not for you, Harmon, but if you watch the intro to this video, someone who was playing Pokemon Violet simply walked into a store and the game crashed. How do you explain that one, Harmon? I have a cousin who also had Pokemon Scarlet crash on him three times in an hour. Furthermore, while I have been very lucky and haven't experienced a single crash so far, I have experienced Pop-In and one other graphical oddity in that whenever I catch a flying Pokemon, the Pokeball is flying too. This game needed at least six more months in the oven before it was released. Also, Nintendo Game Freak themselves have apologized for the poopy state that the game is in, and have even issued refunds for these games. Try explaining that one away, Harmon. If you can do it without the mental gymnastics, that is. Also, for those of you who still don't believe me, get on YouTube and look up all the bugs, glitches, and crashes that players have experienced in this game on YouTube, because they have evidence that this game is buggy and glitchy too. It's almost like Game Freak hired Bethesda Softworks to make this one. And that's coming from a huge Bethesda Softworks and Pokemon fan, mind you. Um, you know, th there are several other notable major titles that are significantly worse than this that did not that did not get nearly the same amount of pushback. I think Gen 9's controversies regarding its performance are purely from, you know, uh, holdouts from Gen 8 
and, and just general pretendos, because- What holdovers from Generation 8 are causing the Gen 9 controversies, Harmon? There are none. This game is controversial because Game Freak rushed it out to customers six months early instead of making sure that they had a relatively stable game. They didn't do that. Game Freak has no experience with open world games, meaning that they should have hired a company who does have experience in open world games. It's why the GTA Trilogy remakes were so poopy, because they hired a poopy mobile developer to make them. Game Freak has so much money in their bank account that they can hire anyone they want to help them make these games. And I know that because a simple Google search reveals that Pokemon is in fact the world's highest grossing media franchise. Going, actually playing the game and having no problems with it in my entire PlayStation, I, I'm forced to conclude that the people who were insisting that the game was broken why I, were either playing it on emulators or were straight up making it up. And I think playing it on emulators is probably the more reliable in uh it's probably it's probably uh, clo uh closer to truth because we saw a lot of video footage regarding like how broken and buggy this game is but you know i i've seen these kind of glitches from emulators all the time you know like uh you know pokemon is known for this where like emulators don't work like right off the gate and you're you're better off just buying the game right Harmon, people had to buy this game at launch Everyone who is experiencing bugs and glitches and crashes are using real hardware, you idiot. Seriously, get on YouTube and look up the videos of the problems this game has. Just because you and I haven't had any real problems so far doesn't mean that others haven't. I've heard it's memory leaks, but as I haven't exactly had the problem myself, I've had no real reason to look them up, before this video anyway. And even though Nintendo released a patch for Pokemon Gen 9 not that long ago, from what I've heard, all it did was fix a shiny duplication glitch. In other words, just like Bethesda Softworks, Nintendo fixed a bug that players actually liked and ignored all the very harmful and very real ones. Stop being a Nintendo and look at the articles and watch the videos, Harmon. And I, I find it remarkable that so many people went along with this narrative that this game was bad or broken. I think like now that it's been a couple of weeks and people have actually gotten their hands on the game, it, it's interesting now seeing how the, the narrative that the game was completely broken has completely died. No, it hasn't. You know, people like Review Tech USA were telling us not to buy the game because it was so broken, but in reality, the game is perfectly fine. No, it isn't. Look at the articles, watch the videos, and tell me you still think it's fine. Oh wait, you will, because you're such a huge Nintendo fanboy. Uh, I can confirm that at this point. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is... runs and plays perfectly fine. No, it doesn't. It might do that for you and me, but even I've had experiences with slowdown and... even poppin. Something that has never happened before in Pokemon. Anyways, with the end of Harmon saying Pokemon Gen 9 runs perfectly fine, which they don't, at least not yet, we have finally come to the end of that dreadful video, which means we can finally be done with this video. I tell you, I didn't think even Harmon would be this big of a Nintendo fanboy, but boy was I wrong. Anyway, it appears that Quantum TV has gone back to Steam Deck and he actually likes it now, apparently, so now I have to go and work on that video. But before I go, I'll say that I'm sorry for neglecting the channel, but I have to get my gameplay channel up to snuff so that I have proof of that I've played these games. Anyways, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye bye for now. <laughs>